All right, let's take a look now at uh, a little more detail into keyframes. And uh, if you remember yesterday, when we created uh, our box and we edited the box, it automatically created keyframes for us. Um, today we're going to look in, at the keyframes in a little more detail and how to change the properties of those keyframes. Um, if you remember last week when we talked about the 12 principles of animation, we looked at how there were two basic styles as far as pose to pose and straight ahead. And that with pose to pose, an animator would draw um, keyframes and then fill in the in-betweens. And Bongo gives us the way, uh, a similar way to do this uh, in that we can create the keyframes and then it will interpolate the difference between those keyframes and fill in those in-betweens for us. So it does that in a digital manner. Um, the first part of this that I want to do, uh, just so you know, the first couple pages on starting on page 14 with to move a keyframe, these are just general uh, going over all this. I'd like you to work through it with me, but uh, when we're done, we're actually going to undo it and come back to uh, this initial starting point with our box. So keep in mind that um, I don't want you to save anything at this point um, so don't don't bother to save any of this information as we work here in the first section when we get to the second part and then I'll tell you yeah this is what we want to actually save so uh, let's begin by with a with an object selected our box selected uh, it gives us two ways to move so on page 14 it talks about two different ways to move and the first way uh, to move a keyframe is to simply grab it and drag it. So I, I can just drag it from 50 to 30. Go ahead and do that. And then I can also right click and choose move and I can type in a specific position. So maybe I want to put this back to 50. Notice though that once I've moved it, it still shows here until I click back on that and then that one disappears. At the bottom of page 14, we can copy a keyframe. So maybe I want to copy 50, then right click and choose copy. And maybe I want to copy this to 40. Click OK. I'm not worried about what any of this is necessarily doing to the animation of the box. I'm simply going through the different uh, ways that we can manipulate these keyframes. I can also delete a keyframe so that when I just copied the 40, I can grab this and drag it up and delete it. And then finally, the last uh, couple parts here, um, if I click animate and grab the time slider, and maybe I'm going to go all the way to 75 here and I'm going to grab the box with ortho on. I'm going to grab the box and slide it straight up. And so that it kind of moves along the x-axis and then it moves up the y-axis at the end. And you'll notice that again it creates that keyframe there. And that's really basically the same thing we did yesterday. That each time we made a change to the box, the position, to the rotation, the scale, we created that keyframe. It's the same thing here. One last thing that we can do is if I slide this even further over here to 80, I can right click and I can add object keyframe to current position. So that's another way to add a keyframe. So again, all of these things that we've just done here, um, they're just demonstrations. It's not anything that we want to save. So I'm going to turn animate mode off and then I'm going to use control, hold down the control key and hit Z to undo those changes that I just made and this puts me back to my initial file that I started with. So I should have a keyframe at 50, 60, and 70, and just to kind of confirm, if I play this, again it moves, it rotates, and it scales all at the same time and to 50, and then it continues uh, from 50 to 60 with the rotation, and it continues from 60 to 70 with the scaling. So make sure that your box is doing that, and if it is, you're good to move on to the next section on page 16 
which is to edit the keyframes themselves for this exercise. And we want to start at tick zero. So with with uh, tick zero all the way down here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose edit keyframe. And you'll notice that uh, this keyframe dialog box appears. There's a series of tabs up here, and they simply want us to note that um, on page 17 it talks about with the position keyframe or the position tab that there's a check mark for store position information. In other words, that keyframe at zero has information about the position of the object, in this case our box. If we click on the rotation tab, same thing, check mark for store rotation information and it, so that keyframe at zero has information about rotation properties for our box. And once again, same thing for the scale. You have a check mark, and so this has information about the scale properties for our box. We're all set here. Let's go ahead and click cancel because we're not going to change any of that information at this point. Let's move on to page 19. At the top of page 19, I'm going to right click on the keyframe at 50, and I'm going to choose edit keyframe. At this point, I want to click on the position tab and note that again a check mark for position information has been stored for the position. Remember yesterday when we created uh, our first keyframe we did our movement of the box two boxes over uh, that it created that at 50 so that's why it has that information. If I jump to the rotation tab however there's no information stored at this keyframe for rotation nor does it have information on scaling. I'll click cancel. Same thing with 60. Edit a keyframe. Now there's no information for position. However, that's the keyframe we uh, created for rotation. And you'll see that there's a check mark for the rotation with 180, which is the value that we entered yesterday on the X axis. And scale does not have a check mark. Cancel there jump to 70, edit keyframe, again position, no information, rotation, no information. But if you remember that's where we did, did our final scale uh, along the z-axis to a scale factor of 3. So I'll go ahead and cancel that. Okay, let's actually make some changes to this setup now. And just so you understand, ultimately my goal here is to have the box move, stop moving, then rotate, stop rotating, then scale, stop scaling, and then we're going to repeat the whole process in reverse order. So it's had scaled up, then we're going to have it scale back down, it's going to rotate back to its original position, and then it's going to move back to its original position. So that's the goal of what we're doing here through this editing process. So, with the box selected, I'm going to right click on keyframe 50, and I'm going to choose edit keyframe. I'm going to go to the rotation tab, and I'm going to put a check mark in store rotation information. And for the x axis, I'm going to put it back to zero. I'll click OK, and if you think about what's going to happen, we remove the rotation information from 0 to 50. So it should not rotate once we start playing this. The rotation should occur from 50 to 60. So let's see what happens. So it's only moving and scaling. It is not uh, rotating until 50. Okay, so that seemed to work. Let's move on to the bottom of page 20 where we're going to edit the scale. So this time keyframe 60. I'm going to right click edit keyframe and for scale I'm going to put a check mark to store scale information and for the Z axis I'm going to change that back to 1. Click OK. So let's play it again. It moves from 0 to 50 and then it rotates from 50 to 60 and scales from 60 to 70. So it's doing what we want so far. So now I'm going to move on to page 21, about halfway down, 
uh, or change the motion timing. So now we're going to move the keyframes a lot around a little bit. Uh, and so we're going to start with the move keyframe here, which is at 50. And we're going to right click and choose move. And I want to move that to 25. Click OK. And again, click back on that one at 50 to get rid of it. On to page 22, I'm going to grab 60 and drag it to 40. Remember, there's two different ways to move these keyframes. So 60 moves to 40, and then I'm going to move 70 to 50. So let's go ahead and play and see what happens. So it moves, it rotates, and it scales. And then once it passes 50, it's done. It doesn't do anything else. Okay, so as I said, the goal of this exercise is to move, rotate, and scale, and then have it do the same thing in reverse order. So scale back down, rotate back to its original position, and move back to its original position. In order to do that, we can use the copy. So I'm going to start by right-clicking on the keyframe at 40. I'll choose copy, and I want to copy this to 60. Click OK. So now I have a new keyframe at 60. Next, I'm going to right click on this one at 25. I'm going to copy. And I'm going to copy this to 75. Click OK. And then the last part is that I want to copy the one at 0 to 99. So I'm going to right click on keyframe 0. I'm going to copy, and I'll copy this to 99. Click OK. Alright, let's play the animation and see if it all works as planned. So it moves, it rotates, it scales up, it scales down, it rotates back, and moves back. And that is exactly what I would like it to do. Now, uh, on page 23, the bottom of the page, it does have one last step of deleting a keyframe, I do not want you to, give it to delete that scale keyframe as they state in the, in the user guide. I want you to leave it just as is here uh, in this video with what I have done so far. So do not do the last step of deleting a keyframe on page 23. Uh, to submit this to course sites, I would like you to apply a material to the box I'd like you to create a ground plane and uh, I would highly recommend that you move the ground plane down so that it's below the, the zero on the z-axis so move it down to a negative maybe negative uh, one maybe, well, or negative four so that the box has um, a room to rotate spin around and scale Right now, if you set the ground plane directly underneath the box, um, when it started to rotate and started to scale, you'll get cut off, and, and we don't necessarily want that. So move your ground plane down when you place it. Uh, again, I would recommend using just a white car paint ground plane, and then also add a spotlight that's big enough to show the whole area. So you don't want to just put the spotlight around the box at the zero position. You want to make sure that the spotlight is big enough to cover the whole entire area that you're going to animate. Uh, the last thing is that when you do go to render your animation, like we did yesterday in class, don't forget uh, to follow the same setup that we used. Um, and if you need to go back to that, refer back to that setup. Um, it was on page. Let me double check here. It was back on page 13 in the guide. You can set that up. Make sure you save it to your Z drive. Make sure you give it a file name. Make sure that you use a JPEG as the file type. Uh, make sure you put a check mark for create video file and that you delete individual frames and you want to do the video type as an AVI. Also, don't forget that uh, up under input, we want the viewport to render to be perspective. Please do not maximize your perspective viewport. So in other words, I don't want you to render this size of a viewport. 
I want you to leave it as the smaller viewport here, the minimized perspective view viewport. Um, as you might imagine, if you change the resolution to the larger viewport, the maximized viewport, then the file size gets bigger. And with course sites, we try to minimize the file sizes so they're easier to download, easier to grade. Okay. Uh, when we go to do some some better animations, maybe we'll think about increasing the file size. But right now, we want to keep it as small as possible. So that completes this video. Uh, I wish you uh, the best of luck with it. And again, make sure that you follow through with all of the final uh, rendering uh, materials and lighting and ground plane. And uh, once you have your AVI file, you're going to submit it to Core Sites. There is an exercise in there called the box animation. Good luck.